Hello, it's Friday, May 31st of 2024, and today I'm here in São Paulo, Brazil, in the São Mateus neighborhood, walking from the bus terminal to the monorail station to explore the largest and busiest urban monorail in the Americas by far, Line 15 Silver. The monorail, operated by the Metro, runs from Vila Prudente, the last stop on Metro's Line 2, to Jardim Colonial in the east, over three different avenues. The line currently has 11 stations, but future extensions to the east and west will bump that number up to 18. The busiest urban monorail in the Americas carries an average of about 100,000 passengers per weekday, according to the Metro's official statistics, which places it behind the Disney World monorail in Florida. But that's not really an urban or public transit system, so I'm not counting it. The line is served by 27 driverless 7-car Bombardier Innovia Monorail 300s, it's a long name, which are part of the same family of vehicles that operate on various systems around the world, including the Las Vegas monorail, which I'd like to ride someday. I decided to take the elevator up to the concourse level. When inside, I was a bit confused on which button to press, but I figured it out eventually. The monorail, which is part of the Integrated Metropolitan Transport Network, currently costs 5 reais and 20 cents. It was 5 reais flat when I was there. This single fare, payable by either the TOP or Bilhete Unico transit cards, allows you to freely transfer to all lines within the system, both metro and regional rail services. I spoke more in detail about São Paulo's fare system at the start of my Heavy Rail Metro video, which is now linked in the top right corner. Here is exactly where we are on the metro map, to the southeast of the city center, but still within city limits. Before heading up to the platform, I checked out the bathroom. Indeed, nearly all train and bus stations in São Paulo have bathrooms, most of which are clean. Other cities could learn a thing or two. Every station on the line is pretty much identical, but that does not mean that they are bad per se. They all have silver metal roofs, tiled island platforms, some seats, and lovely platform screen doors. Although São Mateo station is the only one to have a third track in the center. This third track provided additional capacity when the train was the terminus of the line prior to the end of 2021, before the line was extended one stop east to Jardim Colonial. São Mateus may perhaps become a future short turn for rush hour services, to provide more frequency closer to the city with less rolling stock. Trains arrive every 7-8 to eight minutes on weekdays off-peak, which I believe is very reasonable, but judging by the amount of people waiting at Vila Prudente later on, maybe a higher frequency is warranted at certain times of day. You would assume that I looked this number up, but I couldn't find anything online other than on Google and Apple Maps, which have conflicting information. Great. While editing, I discovered that the Metro's 2023 report lists the monorail as having a frequency of 184 seconds, but I'm assuming this refers to peak frequency and not off-peak or weekend service. I assumed that upon arriving at the station all I would need to do is look at the departure boards, but annoyingly, there are none, so I ended up resorting to the good old stopwatch. The first things I noticed when stepping into the monorail were the crystal clear announcements, and the interior layout. The vehicle's interior looked strange at first, primarily because of the narrow gangways that alternate sides between cars, most likely to balance the train on the track. But once you look past this unusual layout, you'll find that it results in a good mix of longitudinal and transverse seating, while maintaining a considerable amount of standing space. Although the maximum line speed is only 80 kilometers an hour, or 50 miles an hour, the fast corners and steep changes in elevation, some of the benefits of a monorail, make the ride feel like a roller coaster. The ability to see out the front only adds to that sensation. It's honestly quite scary, but thrilling at the same time. Upon stepping out at Jardim Colonial Station, I noticed a bicycle decal on the platform, marking where people with bicycles should stand to enter the train. I quite like this idea of making sure all the bicycles are in one specific area of the train, because then the passenger movement throughout the majority of the train isn't inhibited, no matter how many cyclists there are. From the platform here, you can see long tail tracks that will eventually extend all the way out another 10 kilometers to Cidade Tiradentes. The line will first be extended 7 kilometers to Jaco Pesego in 2027, and then the remaining 3 kilometers will be constructed at some point in the future. Hopefully.
The line diagrams in and outside of trains have provisions for the first extension east, as well as the extension west to Ipiranga that we'll see later. The train I was on went down the tail track, automatically changed direction, and came back to the station on the opposite platform to head back towards Vila Prudente. This station approach is not sped up, by the way. I decided to get off about halfway down the line at Sapopemba. Sapopemba station had insane views of endless high-rises as far as the eye could see, a common sight in São Paulo, the largest city in South America. On the way out, I ran into a recycling bin, and as innocuous as that may seem, I wanted to bring attention to it because, as you can see, there are several colored bins. Brazil makes individuals manually sort the recyclables into several bins, each with a different standardized color based on the material it accepts. I also noticed that there was a large bin full of free condoms. There are bins like this all over the network, and I think it's a very smart program allowing people to shamelessly and freely stock up, but I digress. After passing some street vendors and doing some bus spotting, I entered the Sapopemba bus terminal, served by SIP Trans buses. In addition to dozens of bus bays in a standard layout, the bus station also had this interesting circular building, where you can purchase tickets and use the bathroom. Before re-entering the station, I saw the bike lanes that have been installed within the avenue medians that run underneath the monorail. Parts of the facility are really nice. Other parts, not so much. I personally wish the city would make the effort to put protected bike lanes between the sidewalk and the road, like in some roads in Curitiba, but that would admittedly require a lot more retrofitting compared to slapping some pavement on the existing grass medians. I climbed up the series of escalators back up to the platform and boarded another westbound monorail. One caveat to this whole driverless aspect of the system is that, at least when I was there, there was always a backup driver at the front of each train. I don't know if this is just something that happens occasionally or if there is always someone monitoring the automatic operations. If the latter is true, that almost defeats the purpose of a driverless system, don't you think? Maybe that's a little extreme. The efficiency aspect is still definitely there. Near the end of the journey, the driver opened the panel to check some things. I don't know what they were looking for exactly, but the speedometer is cool. One stop before the terminus, the driver left the train, and another entered the rear, presumably to monitor the train on the way back up the line. On the approach, the train switched to the opposite track to get ready to turn around. Monorail switches are very different to their train track counterparts. On a traditional railway, the outer running rails stay in place, while the two inner switch blades move left and right to guide trains to the proper track. Whereas on a monorail system, an entire section of the concrete beam is moved away, leaving a gap in the track, and it's then immediately replaced by a separate section with a different curvature to connect to another section of static track. This process takes much more time and carries somewhat more risk than a traditional switch. From the platforms at Vila Prudente, you can see the curved tracks that are being extended to Ipiranga Station for an interchange with Line 10 Turquoise. Looking at the bigger picture, this will form a lovely, efficient triangle transfer between Lines 2, 10, and 15. All different modes, interestingly enough. This one-stop extension should also be operational by 2027. The station had a clean bathroom, as has come to be usual, but this one had these glass soap bottles that you had to physically turn upside down. I had never seen these before. Actually, that's wrong. I had seen them once at a different bus station in the city, but never outside of Sao Paulo. You may have noticed that I said a different bus station, because in fact, this station has a bus station directly underneath the monorail platforms where you can transfer to the Espresso Chiradense BRT in addition to various other local municipal buses. I love the design of this station and bus terminal because it facilitates through movement while also making it easy for buses to turn around. They had to realign the entire avenue to be able to fit the station within the median. The elevated bus-only road that carries the BRT a bit further up reminds me of those fence-top protectors around baseball diamonds in the U.S.
at Villa Prudente, you can also connect to Metro Line 2 Green. Although the walk is long, about three minutes, the crowd control measures in place keep passengers moving through the station smoothly. I believe that Line 15 Silver is a great case study for a successful monorail operation. Although usually classified under the Gadget Bond umbrella, a code word for unnecessarily innovative and over-engineered in the transit space, Sanfalo's Line 15 takes advantage of a monorail's strong suits. It's elevated along a single corridor and necessitates tight corners and some steep gradients. Taking all factors into account, including cost, I can't think of another mode of rail transport that would better serve this corridor. If any of you are looking for more monorail content, I would suggest you check out the second half of my Italian Gadget Bond video in the top right corner now, where I rode the Marconi Express in Bologna. Anyway, that's all for me for today. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Maybe one day I'll visit Chongqing.